Okay, good morning, uh, everyone. Welcome to the class. Welcome those of you who are online uh, to BC 214, Developing the Human Spirit. Um, let's take a moment to pray. Um, and we will start. I think this is the other mic that has to go around. Could somebody please pray and then we will start. Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this day as we came before your throne. You give us grace, you give us wisdom and knowledge, God. And when Pastor will uh, teach us from your word, you give us the new revelation, God, from your word. We surrender every student, every faculty it's in your hand. We surrender this class into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right, let me um, share the PDF. Oops. All right. So last week, uh, we covered, I mean, we spent quite a bit of time talking about the stage of innocence that's on page four uh, we also talked about the condition of the human spirit before being born again that's we are without the life of god right? we don't have the life of god we are without the life of god and then we said the human spirit can grow that means the human spirit can uh, just like in the natural the um, the body uh, the physical body uh, the um, uh, you feed the body the body grows the body becomes strong similarly the human spirit can grow you can feed it with the, with with the knowledge of the word of god it can increase in revelation how much it knows about god uh, it can know god's will uh, it can become stronger uh, and many other areas that we can grow so we're going to talk more about that um, in the in the in the weeks to come uh, when we talk about the uh, functions of the human spirit um, just just to emphasize um, the revelation knowledge that means it is knowledge we the human the spirit doesn't know uh, but God reveals to the human spirit and uh, we receive understanding over there in the spirit right so when we want to know the will of god um it takes place first in our spirit okay uh, we'll just go to first corinthians chapter 2 it's not in the notes but um in first corinthians chapter 2 Um, let's read verses um, 14 to 16, 1 Corinthians 2, 14 to 16, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 to 16. But the nature, ma natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual ju judges all things, Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one, for who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Okay. So, um, actually, I just want to read verse 11 as well. i just move back, verse 11. For what man knows the things of a man, except the spirit of the man which is in him? First Corinthians 2, 11. What man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? That means, you know, the best person to know you, I mean, other than God, the best person to know you is the spirit within you. So what man knows the things of a man? So I can I know everything about you? 
For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? That means your spirit is the best to know about you. Right? So I say, what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him? And it is in the spirit that God is going to reveal to us his plans, his purposes, his will. Right? Uh, as we read, verse 14, the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. So natural man, that is, it, I'm not, we are not receiving the things of the Spirit of God through our minds. The natural man does not, verse 14, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God because they're foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. That means they must be understood by the Spirit first. So we want to receive the things of the Holy Spirit. We don't receive it first in our mind. We receive it first in our spirit. Then it comes to our mind. Our, our mind begins to understand. And then we can say it, we can speak it, we can uh, express it. But it first is spiritually discerned or spiritually understood. Understood by the Spirit. And verse 15, he was spiritual. He examines everything. But... He himself is rightly judged by no one. So a spiritual person, a person living by the Spirit, he discerns everything, but somebody from the outside cannot understand him fully. Why? Because you don't judge in the natural. You cannot understand spiritual things in the natural. Right? So he himself is not judged by anyone. Then he says, who has known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him? We have the mind of Christ. That is, you know, the, God reveals his mind to us. In the spirit, right? So we'll come to this, but what I wanted to emphasize is that our human spirit is a place where we are going to receive revelation of spiritual things. Our human spirit is a place where we are also going to understand the will of God, the mind of God. Right? It is first made known to us in our spirit, then the the soul or the mind begins to understand. Um, sorry. Um, just some side notes here, this on page 5, um, about the human, human soul. Um, the main thing to understand is, in the Old Testament, the word heart and soul are sometimes used in a very interchangeable way in the Old Testament. Okay. So uh, you just have to read the context and then see, okay, is it is that referring to only the spirit or is it referring to the emotions? Because it's kind of used interchangeably. Whereas in the New Testament, it's very distinct, very clear. Heart, spirit, to talk about the human spirit. Soul, mind, to talk about the soul or the mind. And it uses a combined term, inner man, to talk about both spirit and soul. Okay. So when you're studying the New Testament, keep that in mind. Um, and there are some, yeah, I just gave, gave a list here of, of things I, of how the, the word soul is used in the New Testament. And I've just taken this from the dictionary, that's all. Um, other questions uh, that have come up in the past, um, so I, I, you know, I made a note of this question on page six. Um, in the spiritual realm, will people feel emotions? Yes, we can feel because uh, Jesus talks about you know, uh, hell, he said there will be no more uh, uh, in hell, uh, there will be weeping, gnashing of teeth. You know? In new heavens, new earth, there will be no more tears, no more sorrow. Right? So the emotions are there in the spiritual realm. Uh, another question is recognition. You know, can we recognize people? Right? Uh, answer is yes. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, um, it says, uh, we shall know, um, uh, verse 12, verse Corinthians 13, 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know, just as I also am known. So when Jesus comes, he says, will be recognized? Well, yeah, you will know. You'll know others. You'll recognize others. You will know just as you are known. Like right? We'll know each other and be able to understand each other.
um, can we uh, remember things from the, the Earth's realm? That's an interesting question. You know, like after you leave this world, can you remember about this world? Um, it's an interesting question because we are only we can go back to Luke 16, where Jesus spoke about the rich man and Lazarus, and the rich man being in hell, he was crying out, and there. He says, you know, remember when you were living on the earth, right? You had everything, but Lazarus had nothing. And from there, he remembers, oh, my father and my brothers are there. Please send somebody to tell them, not, you know, so they don't end up here. So that means I'm just going by that story. I'm going by that story that based on that, maybe there is some remembrance of what happened here on earth. But in heaven, so that's um, uh, what will happen when we, um, uh, but in heaven, we know it's a place of joy, which means we are not going to remember our sins and our failures, right? So God says, right, um, as far as, as the east is from the west, so far I will remove your transgressions, your sins. I buried your sins in the depths of the sea. So, so obviously in heaven, we're not going to be remembering all the mistakes we made, because then it'll be very sorrowful. So, so, so that is, you know, we just based on that, we say, okay, um, most likely. In, so in heaven, we're not going to remember uh, those things. But God will reward us for the works we've done on earth. So maybe there may, there may be a recall of the good things. I'm not sure. Uh, the other question that's related is, when we go to heaven, can we see earth from heaven? So that means uh, my mother, father, grandfather, whoever is gone, are they watching me now from heaven? No. Uh, I don't know. Now, many people quote Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, you know, seeing so we have such a big cloud of witnesses that has run with endurance. So the picture there in the Greek is that of a big stadium full of people. Uh, people have died and gone. We are the runners who are now living. We are the runners, and they are looking at us. It's as a picture, like you know, seeing them. We have such so many witnesses. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. That's the picture he's having in mind. So while that's the picture of Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. That doesn't mean that it implies that everybody from heaven looking down at you watching. You know, they are probably busy worshiping Jesus and enjoying God's presence, not wasting time looking at us here on earth. Right? So my thought, again, I'm just sharing my, you know, this my thought is they are not looking at us. Here. They won't be able to see us. Otherwise, they'll be so sad all the time. <laughs> but Maybe if God allows, you know, because there's some people who say, I went to heaven, then I saw what was happening here on earth. So maybe God allows them to see uh, for that individual case, maybe. But generally, I don't think that's going to be the way it is, that they are always watching us here on earth because they're busy. They're probably busy looking at Jesus. That's much more better than looking at us. You know? So these are some questions people generally ask. So I, I just put them here. Let's go to chapter 2. Um, in chapter 2, page 7, yeah. Pastor, like, uh, and continuation, like, for this question, what we like, can uh, people who are in heaven, uh, since, uh, like, even we are, uh, uh, like, studying that, God reveals his plans to us in our spirit. Yes. Uh, it is relating to us who are here, right? Like, yes, yes. Uh, so people who are in heaven, mm -hmm. will they also know the full plan of God for um, for humanity or like what gonna do next and or for our lives, like they will have the revelation of what is the plan of God? <clears throat> oh, um, so you, okay, your question is all the people have gone to heaven because they are in heaven. Will they understand everything about God's plan? And will they know everything about everything? Yeah. Um, if they are already 
Um, so we just read First Corinthians 13. I'm just thinking about that verse. First Corinthians 13 says, we, uh, uh, Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also um, know. So he says, Now we know only little, little, little part. But then the implication is, then I will know everything. But does that everything make us omniscient? See, God is omniscient. God knows everything. So Paul is saying, of course, I know, he's saying in verse 12, you know, now we know in part, then we will know fully. Uh, but the question is, when he says we will know fully, does it mean we'll know everything? I don't think so, because the only person who knows everything is God. And that's what omniscience is. It is a part of deity. Right? That means only deity, only God is omniscient. Only God knows everything. We are still, yeah, we are in heaven, but we are still human beings, humans. We may be with God, but we are still uh, spirits that he created. So, will we know everything? Uh, so, does Paul mean here, now I know in part, but then I shall know, just I also have known. Does he mean we will know everything? I don't think that's the extent because that is omniscience that is god only god has that so i think um my answer to this will be uh whatever god allows us to know reveals to us even in heaven that's what we will know so for example uh, even when jesus will exactly return even we, we won't know right it'll only be known to the father and the father says okay now then otherwise we might tell everybody. <laughs> no, just joking. But um, so that's yeah. So my answer to the question is uh, no. We won't know everything, but we will know much more, right? Because to know everything is omniscience, and that's only God's attribute. Yeah. After, uh, after we have made, we are spirits of light in the heaven. So do we have free will there also? Like after going to heaven? The answer is yes. So then you say, will somebody again sin in heaven? I uh, hope, so, hope not. <laughs> so will we have free will in heaven? God created us. That is one of our attributes. And that also of angels. He, angels are not robots. Angels also have a will. That's how Lucifer sinned. Right? He said... I will ascend. You know, he also exercised his will. So angels and humans, we are created with a free will. Um, but and we will have that free will. But those who are allowed in heaven are those who have demonstrated that they are using their free will to worship God. They have demonstrated, they made a choice. Now that does open up the question. Can somebody do something wrong out of free will? I mean, theoretically, yes. <laughs> because can some other angel sin? Theoretically, yes. Um, but has would God have taken some measure to prevent that? I think so. That some way he has, he will make sure that uh, I don't know how, but he will make sure that there's, you know, we don't have to go through this whole thing again. Yeah. So in theory, I'm just theorizing, right? Because we are free moral beings, and he's not going to take it away. And that's the whole point, that we should, as free moral beings, choose to worship God. Uh, so the spirit and body. So when 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 uh, this was actually, it was uh, in the, in mother's womb when it, when cells are, are are getting prepared and to I mean uh, about to form a body, then only the spirit will form, or else 
the spirit is there from some eternity are these many souls are there in eternity because god knows everything how many people will be in god so um my understanding is that god see god is the creator uh, of the human spirit and as human beings we all had a starting point we had a point in time before which we didn't exist after which we existed god created us so the question you are asking is let's say you know there are going to be 13 billion so many so many spirits human beings what were the number is the question is were all these spirits created beforehand and kept somewhere and then zing zing <laughs> and they come into the earth <laughs> like they come in <laughs> and then they are born on the earth or are the spirits created at different points in time so my thought is it's happening uh in different points in time that means we when conception takes place in the body i feel that's the time of that's the time the hu the spirit created by god is given to the body and the human spirit is created and given to the body now we can't prove it by chapter and verse i'm just thinking uh you know the only thing we can say is that uh you know god is the father of spirits like we read in hebrews 12 <coughs> um and um uh we are born uh, like says psalm 113 and you know, we are may be created in the womb so i'm thinking that's the time the spirit comes in and the body is formed around the spirit so maybe that's the time god creates that person is what i'm thinking but you know we don't have a clear chapter and verse on okay this is exactly how it takes place whether it's like okay god already created everything and one by one is releasing into the earth or it's happening in time uh, uh, you know i'm thinking it's happening in time all right so let's go to chapter 2 where we focus on a little bit more on the human spirit okay um the, the main point that we want to understand in this chapter is that the human spirit is the real person with personality faculties and functions so what i want us to understand is the real you is your spirit hmm? see outside body will change we grow old soul also is changing i mean mind and emotions changing the real person is the human spirit and your spirit has personality it has faculties things it can do our faculties and functions so the you can imagine the human spirit just like how we imagine the or we understand the human body for example body hmm? the human body has faculties may they we say five senses five faculties mainly what you see here smell touch taste all that five faculties human body and it is through that we feed information to our soul mind emotions so you can imagine the human spirit to be a complete person <clears throat> a human the <clears throat> human spirit to be a complete person with personality <clears throat> faculties and functions things that you can do like the human body has functions you can stand you can talk you can walk all those things you can do right so similarly 
the past and the spirit must be understood. The spirit must be understood to be like a full real person with personality, faculties, and functions. And we want to see this. Let's go to Second Peter chapter 1. Second, oh yeah. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 13 to 15. Somebody could read it. First Peter, uh, Second Peter, chapter one, verse thirteen to fifteen. Yes, I think it is right, as long as I am in in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Mm. So see how Peter is talking. As long as I am in this tent. So he's calling his body tent. But the real person is inside the tent. As long as I am in this tent. And then he says, I must put off my tent. That means the real person is inside this house. I come inside the house, I mean, I'm in the house, I might go out of the house. This is only a house, the body. But the real person, I, Peter said, I, the real person, I will put off this tent and, uh, you know, obviously go to be with the law. So, the real person, the real you, is living inside this body. The spirit and that spirit is the real person so even if this body decays the real person continues to live you're going to continue to live and that spirit has personality faculties and functions so let's go back to uh, first peter chapter 3 we spent some time here on this verse uh, in the beginning we'll read it spent, we'll review all of that one more time First Peter chapter 3, um, let's read verses 3 and 4. First Peter 3, 3 and 4, please. Somebody can read it. First Peter chapter 3, verse 4. 3 and 4, Pastor. Mm, 3 and 4. Knowing the first, that scoffers will come in the last um, days. That is First Timothy. Let you go, First Peter. Oh, sorry, uh, do not let your adornment be merely outward arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a Gentile and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. Mm. So, First Peter 3, 3 and 4. Peter is saying, he is, of course, speaking directly to the ladies. He's saying, okay, don't focus on all your outward wearing. But verse 4, rather, let it be the hidden person. Who is he referring to as a hidden person? Your heart, your spirit. So the real person is a hidden person. It's hidden inside. That's the real person. And that's the heart. And... It has incorruptible beauty. So we said this hidden person has, you know, this uh, a glory or a beauty or a personality which will not fade away. And he mentions some things, a gentle and quiet spirit, right? Which in the sight of God uh, is very precious. So I want us to make some statements here. Uh, page seven, the hidden person has its own traits and characteristics that define the individual's personality. Right? So your spirit, every human spirit has certain characteristics. You know, sometimes you will know, you'll see some people, oh, that person is very bold, that person is very adventurous, that person is very quiet, that person is very... You know, what are the, that personality of the spirit comes out in the person. That person is very strong. Or that person is very determined. So that, 
in Luke 9, 51, uh, actually that whole passage, and we're just picking out one verse, 55, Jesus turns around to his disciples, James and John. He says, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. That means what kind of, how, what? so James and John, so this the incident there in Luke 9 is they come to a village, Jesus and his disciples, they're all traveling. They come to this village, they don't want to receive Jesus. So James and John says, Lord, let us call fire on them. And I like how Elijah called fire down. We'll finish them and show them. Jesus rebukes them, says, you don't know what manner of spirit. That means you don't, you're, not, you're not understanding, you know, uh, your own spirit. It, yes, your own spirit is so aggressive. And at that particular moment, it was uh, very angry, short temper, that kind of expression. You know, we let's finish them. They're not receiving us. So you hey, you don't know what manner of spirit you're. You understand what your how your spirit is reacting in the situation, and uh, you know you got to temper that. And uh, so, uh, and I, uh, there was a very big difference between how they wanted to do what they wanted to do and what Elijah wanted to do. Elijah was you know seeking to glorify God. Here they're saying, let's do it out of revenge and you know uh, anger and so on. But anyway, the point is, your human spirit has characteristics. It has traits. And if we can build the right traits or character in our spirit, then that will be revealed in our behavior. So example, uh, I'm saying, okay, let's think about you know, the fruit of the spirit, say meekness. How can you have meekness or, or English word humility? It's not something in the mind. Oh, just put yourself down, make yourself good for nothing. No. Meekness is developed in your spirit. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit developed in your spirit. So when your spirit has that quality, then it will show up in your life. So every other thing, you know, what we said, uh, love, joy, peace, kindness, meekness, gentleness or self-control. So all those qualities, where is it going to be developed? Not in our mind. It is developed in our spirit. The Holy Spirit is developing that in our spirit. Then it, it will come. If that is the character, character of your spirit, the trait of your spirit, then it will come. It will be in your personality. People will say, ah, oh, he's a very loving person, kind person, gentle, all the fruit of the spirit. Will be seen. Okay, um, page uh, eight. Otherwise, Jesus said, you know, uh, out of the heart, all these other things, bad things will come, evil thoughts, murders, adulteries. That means from the heart, this is all happening. Okay. So, understand that the human spirit, a uh, what you build into your human spirit, right? That will define your personality. That will define who you are as a person. We also want to talk about five faculties of the human spirit and functions of the human spirit. I will just mention this. We're going to study each of these in detail. And you may have seen some of this in the book on the gifts of the Holy Spirit because it's connected there. So the human spirit, what we can see in the scriptures is the human spirit has at least five faculties. That means just as the body has the faculty of sight, you can see, the human spirit also has eyes. Okay. So uh, we know these scriptures. You know, in the Old Testament, Psalmist says, Open thou my eyes, that I may behold wonderful things out of your word. So what does it mean? What open my eyes? I want to see wonderful things from your word. He's not talking about natural eyes. Natural eyes, yeah, you can read. But he's talking about spiritual eyes. I want to see wonderful things. Okay. Uh, so uh, the our spirit has eyes, and uh, it can see, and uh, and therefore we can have you know what we call as vision. That means our spirit is seeing, perceiving. Similarly, we can hear. That means 
words come in. We were going to study these five faculties. All right? so you can hear. That means just here right now, I, you're hearing me. I am communicating words to you. And all these words put together are making sentences. Sentences put together is giving some meaning, is imparting some information, knowledge. But you're hearing because of sound. In the spiritual realm, similarly, we can receive words, sentences, knowledge, information. We can hear. But God doesn't use sound. It just comes into our spirit. We can feel. So sense, sensation. Now, now you feel cold, feel warm, uh, all of our, our emotions. So we can have those senses, sensations or senses in our spirit. Similarly, we can smell and taste spiritually. Hmm? Spiritually, in heaven, for example, we are in heaven. Bible says the prayers of the saints are like incense. Incense has smell. So in heaven, there is that. Uh, I know that must be this. I don't know what the smells are, but must be something very nice. Right? That our prayers are like incense before God, in the presence of God, and. Um, Taste, of course, even in the spiritual realm, there's that sense of taste. Again, I know how it's how it's um, made up, but we will we will share some thoughts on this as we go through each of these five faculties, right, in an upcoming chapter. And we mentioned the seven functions, so I, 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 um, I'll just mention these now. Uh, we're going to look at all of these uh, point by point in different coming chapters. The function. So, what does the born again human spirit do? That means you're born again. What what must your spirit be doing? So, it has faculties. It yeah, it can learn all these things. What does it do? Number one, uh, it's conscience to help us recognize what is right and wrong. Right. So, the conscience is actually a function of the spirit. <clears throat> So when we say conscience, what are we meaning? We are saying there is something God has put inside the spirit. Every person is telling them this is right and this is wrong. So you can think even an uh, unbeliever. You ask generally ask unbeliever, is it okay to murder? No, no. How do you know it's not okay to murder? Conscience. So even an un unsaved person, as long as his spirit is alive, like he has not, you know, like killed his co conscience, the conscience is there, he will tell us to some extent what is right and wrong. But whether he does it or not, that is a different story. <laughs> but at least he can tell us correctly, this is right, this is wrong. Right? Because we have a conscience. It is a function of the spirit, the human spirit. But some people can suppress the conscience. No, don't listen. The conscience is saying, don't do it. No, I won't listen. Go do it. Then slowly the conscience dies. The voice becomes softer. Um, another function of the human spirit is to know. That is receiving revelation knowledge. Uh, another function is to commune. That is to fellowship with God. The human spirit is also a con like a container. It carries the nature, the grace, the power, the glory of God. The human spirit also has identity, uh, who we are in the spirit, spiritual realm. right? So the recognition of that identity is important for us. The human spirit can also do things, act. That means in the spirit you can do things. You can believe, you can serve, you can intercede, you can fight, uh, you can get things done in the spirit. Uh, the human spirit can also grow. That means it's be becoming, the character is becoming more and more like Jesus. So that means the character of the spirit uh, is becoming, is being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. So these are the functions of the spirit. We will discuss all these in upcoming chapters. All right. Yes, Prince. Uh, 
Pastor, uh, we're talking about the senses of the spirit and uh, what the spirit can do. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we can, we saw like spirit also can take actions. Mm -hmm. So uh, like my question is like, is uh, astral projection mm -hmm. is true or can it also be done? Yeah, can be done. So the human spirit can do a lot of things in the spiritual realm. We are uh, talking of all the good things we can do. But other people can train their spirit to do wrong things. Example, we are thinking about communing with God. They will commune with some dark powers. And they say this, you now we call them as familiar spirits. But they say, no, no, there's some spirit that is talking to me, very nice, giving me extra information, very friendly. So they will build, come in with that. We call it familiar spirit, because actually an evil spirit that has become friendly with this person, giving them information. Now like that, they will um, do other things, like, you know, the evil spirits can help them uh, have experiences, one of which is, go out of the spirit, show you other things and come. So they make them feel very powerful. This Yeah. So the good side example is Paul. We read um, 2 Corinthians 12. He was caught up to the third heaven. So free ticket. Right. Body is here on earth. But he went there. And God was speaking to him. He said, I heard things I'm, I can't even utter. So what happened? Body is here on earth. God took his spirit there. Same thing with John. In Revelation. He said, on the Lord's day, I was just praying. Suddenly, I was in the spirit. And uh, God says, come up here. And he's there. The door is opening. He going, he's going inside. Like, you know, it's like actually entering some place. But body is on earth. But in the spirit. Now, that is an experience God gives. Paul is not saying, today I'll press three buttons. <laughs> 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 He's not going up and down <laughs> like uh, taking a lift. <laughs> lift is only if you want to go <laughs> in the building. But this is not like that, no? It's not like Paul is deciding today I'm going. God is giving that experience. And for a reason. You know, in Paul's case, he had to give him revelation about the New Testament. In John's case, he had to give him revelation about coming events. So there is a reason. Yeah? Uh, God does those things. Does it mean that person is more special? I think it means that person has more responsibility. Paul, you go back and write everything. You know, whatever I want you to write, you make sure you give it to the church. John, write. Because I, uh, uh, they have to read. It's a responsibility. Right? Not just... Uh, But like that, evil spirits can help people go have this kind of uh, experience. All right. And there is a group of students that would have been and then yeah see is it possible yeah because uh, god has not changed and god can still do god will still do these things but here's the thing we don't know 
uh, hopefully, I say, hopefully, all these ministers of God are saying true, truthfully. But we don't know when, how much is genuine, and how what some people are just making up, right? So we're not denying the genuine. But we also must be aware that sometimes people can just make up some stories and say, write some things, right? Just for getting, becoming popular, writing books, this, that story. So. And the other thing is, the only way we can judge those things is by going back to the Bible. So when people start saying things that we cannot judge by the Bible, like if they say, I went to heaven, there, there was uh, one school, special school called <laughs> School of the Supernatural. <laughs> All the believers who died had to go to the school first. <laughs> some people have written all these things that say, uh, some, uh, some pastor had written uh, about how God, there is some training schools and God is training the spirits and something and all his writing. Now, there is no way for us to judge those things. Right? Somebody else had written, I went to heaven, he saw one big storeroom of different body parts. Uh, body parts are hanging there. And so if you, you have to claim your body part, if uh, any injury or something. Now, how will you judge that? But he said, I went to heaven, I saw those things. Uh, some, so I went to heaven, I saw my two dogs. They were there. Uh, how are we to judge? So my response is, just leave it alone. They had their experience. If it's real, enjoy. <laughs> if it's not real, <laughs> leave it. For us, we have to. We can only live by the written scripture. That's all. Yeah. So, I I don't pay too much attention to it. I just leave it. Yeah. Um. If you want to, you pray. <laughs> But I think uh, there's a lot more things to pray about now. <laughs> Eventually, you're going to spend eternity there. So the short time we have here on Earth, I think you pray about things here on Earth. <laughs> Once you're there, you're there. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you can't pray about Earth. So, so that's uh, my response. Yeah. I mean, there are people who say, you know, must pray that God will take you to heaven. Why? You're going to be eternity there. Now you focus on getting the job done. You know, yeah, very short time here on earth. All right, very quickly, there's a question on the chat. Uh, the human spirit is made alive and sensitive to things of the spirit. When one is born again and indwelt by the spirit of God, the people of the world who are not born again operate according to the level of their conscience, their knowledge of right and wrong. Yes, that's correct. They operate out of their conscience and God's, uh, you know, and. Uh, and they can, you know, either the conscience can become strong or the conscience can become weaker, depending on how, you know, what they do with that. Okay, so let's pause here. About so, can we pray for the rapture to happen quickly? I mean, we can say, "Lord, come, Lord Jesus, quickly," because Revelation twelve says, "The Spirit and the Bride say, come." Spirit, the bride is the church. The spirit and the bride, they're crying out, saying, come. That means they're saying, Lord, we want you to come. So you want to pray, you pray that. Uh, spirit and bride. So there's nothing wrong in saying, Lord Jesus, please come. Um, but he will come in his own time. I mean, <laughs> I, I'd had that point at time. Uh, whenever he sees that time, it's ready. Okay, let's uh, close in prayer. And we'll continue this next week. Somebody could pray, please. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before your throne, oh Lord Father. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love, oh Lord Father. We thank you for this time of uh, learning and uh, good insights, oh Lord Father, that you have given. Lord, we pray, oh Lord Father, whatever you have taught us, oh Lord, uh, we ask you, Lord Father, that uh, let it be in our hearts, oh Lord Father. Let it fall on the good ground, oh Lord Father, to bear 30, 60, and uh, 100 folds, oh Lord Father, for your kingdom. And help us, oh Lord Father, to live according to your word, O Lord Father, and walk in your ways. We submit our lives to you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.